Hey everyone and welcome back to the studio. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about some lenses that I went and tested recently. Uh, people who have watched the channel know um, I recently bought a 12mm um, Samyang uh, lens, an f2, a manual lens. And I got that for vlogging outside because I really wanted that wide angle uh, field of view. But um, after using it for a bit I, I started thinking that it wasn't really any wider than this. So I'm shooting on the 16mm now. And then that made me think, if the 16mm is not really that much tighter and I'm not getting advantage from the 12mm Samyang, then maybe I could go to an 18mm uh, and that would open up uh, Fuji's excellent 18 uh, to 55mm 2.8 to 4 lens, um, which is an autofocus lens uh, and would have that zoom. Um, and it also made me think that maybe I should go back and try out that uh, Tamron lens again, which goes from 18 to 300. It'd be a dual lens, I could vlog with it, um, as well as like obviously um, shoot some telephoto stuff, some bird life, and that kind of thing. I decided to head to the Auckland Camera Centre and try out um, the lenses in their shop. And uh, so huge thanks to the Auckland Camera Centre for putting up with me. I was in there for a couple of hours, uh, annoying them. And uh, anyway, they're great guys in there. Uh, go and uh, check them out and uh, maybe go and make a purchase there. So I'm going to do a full comparison uh, on all three lenses, the 12mm versus the 16mm versus uh, the 18 to 55 and the 18 to 300 to see uh, which could be uh, the best possible all-round vlogging lens for doing this sort of two camera stuff when I'm actually outside and holding it in my hand. Uh, it's not bad here in the studio, you can get a nice uh, mid shot on the 16mm and actually the 12mm is a little bit wide in here. So uh, from that point of view, um, great for this, but yeah, I'm looking for that perfect handhold lens like this is just a little bit too tight when you um, when you get in, in here, uh, especially when there's a crop on because you've got the um, the digital stave and the boost on because you're hand holding. Anyway, so check this out. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, stay to the end and I'm going to show you shots of the lenses side by side so you can really see what the difference is in framing as well as some side by side shots of uh, the specific lenses um, with the various crops on, so uh, no crop because no crop with just the ibis, the crop with ibis and digital stave, and the crop on uh, ibis, digital stave, and boost. Here we are on the 16mm 2.8 uh, as my potential vlogging lens, and here I am off to the side. Camera's doing a good job of tracking actually, even with my glasses on, which is quite nice. So, this is what the field of view looks like on this. Lens, it's a little bit better if I if I'm side on it, I get a bit more view. So basically, what I'm doing today is I am looking to see if maybe the 18 to 50 mil, 18 to 55 Fuji lens might be a better walk around lens. I'd like to have a zoom, uh, that convenience of a zoom, and I'm wondering because the 18 to 55 has image stabilisation built in, maybe I can get a, away with using it without the digital stave, and I end up with a similar field of view. Even though uh, this, you know, even though technically it's a little bit tighter, but um, so we can actually want to walk with this, eh? If I'm careful, not that I normally do. I normally just stand, kind of hold. Anyway, that's what the 16 to 55 looks like. Uh, six, that's what the 16 looks like. This is just IBIS now, uh, no digital stave, and actually that last take, the boost was on, so it should have actually been uh, mega cropped in, and it also should have been a bit jerky. Um, it didn't look like it, but we'll see when we get it back in post. Once again, eye tracking. Interestingly, when I took the stave off and I had my glasses on, it wouldn't track me, but um, anyway. So, there you go. That's what it looks like. There's still the 16mm. So, there you go. Uh, obviously, with the boost on, it is clearly a lot more cropped, but it's still giving you a fairly good field of view to look at. And I think you could use uh, the 16mm even if you were wanting to use it in conjunction with having someone else in the frame and just still being able to see that background. So now I have image stabilisation, digital stave and actually put boost on as well. So how's that? It does look wider. I have to say it does look wider. Maybe this is good, this lens. I was a bit kind of like, eh, it's not really worth it because I mean obviously giving up autofocus is a bit of a hassle but then if the focus is in and out which we'll see when we go back 
Like um, whether the Fuji's hunting back to front, then maybe it's good to just have the manual focus. But um, be interesting to check out the 18 uh, as well. Let's just walk a little bit. I don't mind that with the boost on actually. This is digital stabe and image stabilisation, uh, but no boost. Does it look wobbly? Don't know. Does it look wider? Don't know that either. I think it looks a tiny bit wider. So, this is the Samyang 12mm IBIS digital stabe, no boost. Um, this is the 12mm Samyang, so you can see what this looks like. As I say, like normally I don't walk with my camera, normally I just stand and talk. That does look a lot more stable, um, looks quite stable and it's a lot wider. So at the moment there's no image stabilisation on at all. No, there's IBIS. There's IBIS but nothing else, no digital state. It'll be interesting to see whether I look a bit wobbly or not. And whether my handshake is showing up. I can see my hand shaking. <laughs> So as you can see, with the IBIS only, um, you're getting a very wide shot. And even if you're using the digital stab and the boost, you're still getting a very wide shot with the 12mm Samyang. So it is considerably wider than the 16mm, and I, I think it was probably worth getting after all. Uh, and the next lens we're going to try is the 18 to 55 which has image stabilisation built into the lens. And I'm wondering whether I can get away with just um, IBIS and the OIS together. Here we are, we're on the 18-55, to 55. so that's IBIS, OIS, Digital Stab, and the Boost Mode. So the thing with the Boost Mode is, hopefully you get that almost perfectly static shot. It'll be very interesting to compare these side by side and see just how big the crops are. I kind of feel like I could just about handle that. So here we go, we are on IBIS, OIS and digital stab, so this is what it's like walking. It looked pretty smooth with the, um, looked pretty smooth and that with the 12mm. Now I'm kind of hold, I'm holding it with both hands now so it's not really a good indicator. It's kind of more like that. And then if I was standing still. So, IBIS, OIS digital stab. This is the 1855 and this is with uh, OIS and IBIS on and uh, really doesn't like trying to latch on to me when I got my glasses on but um, anyway what if I just stand still and talk to camera so blah 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 me and Glenn have come to look at such and such and we're going to do a photo shoot around here and blah 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 so that would be Kind of that field of view, oh, it's definitely tighter, but is it too tight? That's the question. Uh... So yes, once again, obviously with the boost on, it's tighter. Um, I think either shot is probably fine. If it was just me and the background, that would be okay. But by the time you're um, trying to also put someone else uh, in that shot and have the background, I just feel that this 18 is probably getting a bit too tight especially if you take into consideration um, uh, the crop that you're going to get with 4k if you decide to use it anyway that's that so we're going to try the 18 to 300 now because i want to see like how wobbly it is on video um it might be all right with um the uh, the ibis and stuff in the in the xt4 cool cool this is the 18 to 300 i've got uh image stab on digital stave and boost. I jumped to my mouth there, that's not very good. And this is holding onto the camera, but what you could maybe do is maybe you could hold on to the lens. And that might give you a slightly wider view. That looks pretty wobbly though. Unless I'm holding very still. So that gives you an idea of the view there and how stable it is, or what actually by the looks isn't. Uh, that's quite interesting, like, yeah. It does not seem to like that very much at all. Looking at the lens, gives you an idea. Ibis digital stab boost and the VC is probably on on this. I think the VC is on on this 18 to 300 all the time. This is the Tamron, Tamron 18 to 300. Okay, so I had a bit of trouble picking up my eye there for a moment. 
Uh, this is with the boost off. Yeah, I think almost this looks a little bit better. What's that like? It's a bit wobbly, eh? Wobbly arms are going to tight arm, probably. I think the, um, the eye tracking is definitely struggling a bit more with this lens. Uh, maybe it's a bit dark now. Anyway, uh, that's no boost on, but um, IBIS and digital stabe and the um, lens stabe. Oh. Okay, so now we've all we've got is, um, is IBIS and what's in the lens. No, uh, no digital stabe, none of that. Uh, so this is what the shot looks like. And then, uh, if you wanted to stretch it out, you could potentially be a bit sneaky and hold it on the lens. There it is, held on the lens. That gives you a bit more reach, and then you don't need a need a tripod. I guess you can see my arm there, though. I guess that's the only issue with that. What if I just come in a sneaky bit? Could do it like that. Yada yada yada. So here we are just hanging on to the lens. Gives an idea of maybe almost the widest view. That's the widest view possible, holding on to the lens. Uh, I'm quite shaky now because <laughs> I'm really tired. So there is the full range of fields of view with uh, the Tamron 18-300 to uh, with all the various different types of stabilization on and off. For me, it's just a little bit too tight. I don't think this is a viable option for me uh, for all the same reasons that the other 18mm is probably not quite uh, going to work. But additionally with this, the fact that the stabe in the lens just doesn't work well with the stability in the camera means that holding this by the lens to try and get that wider field of view just it's not really going to work. So here are all the different lens options. They would all work as vlogging lenses, uh, but for my purposes of myself having someone else in the shot and then comfortably getting the background in uh, and having the option of shooting 4K and dealing with that extra crop. Um, I feel like the Samyang 12mm is probably the best bet. Uh, the 16mm works um, and I've used it before in 4K and uh, it does work. So it just depends on what you're doing. Um, I hope that was useful. Please leave any comments uh, below. What, what would be your pick of these and why? Hey guys, so thanks for watching. I hope that was useful to somebody out there. Um, I don't think I've seen too many really good reviews where you see these things side by side. Uh, check out Camera um, Conspiracies. Casey does a lot of really uh, excellent um, reviews of different cameras uh, and different lens setups, especially for vlogging. Um, so check his channel out because he's done a lot to help me over the years. Uh, I ended up buying this X-T4 um, uh, based on some of his reviews. Anyway guys, thanks very much, uh, thanks for tuning in, and once again, like, subscribe, and please share with some people, especially if you found it useful. See you later.